Thank you for tuning in and welcome back to the Sandwich of Coherency. So let's just go ahead and jump right into this. We're going to go ahead and follow up on what's been happening in Ohio. And, you know, I, I just want to go ahead and say that we, we got to ask ourselves some major questions. One, what is the delay with getting FEMA there? How is it we're a couple weeks after and they're not there already on the ground, boots in place, fixing, oh, well, rather, we can't say fixing, but assessing, doing something to protect the citizens of this area where this train has derailed. You know, they, like I said, like, we, like they, they said, they set up that one mile radius. And again, they, they, it, there's this idea, of, whoa, it's, 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 it's safe outside the one mile block, you know, and, and, and we're going to watch a few clips of this from people that are in that area, you know, and, and it's one thing we've talked about before that air travels. It does not sit in the same place like this. They honestly, and this is not just the, the, the Democrats, it's Democrats and Republicans. They think that the American people are stupid. They think you are stupid and they can continue to tell you any old bullshit they want. And you're just going to kill over and believe it. But, you know, again, you know, this, where's the president? Seriously, you know, apparently, I guess it's, uh, since most of the residents, apparently, it seems from what we can tell, are white. It seems to be why they're not bothering to put as much effort in it, because, you know, I don't know. And I know maybe that's a stretch, but um, at this point with the current administration, I would not put it past them. And let's be honest, and, and I know a lot of people are going to hear me say that and they're going to get very upset about that. But let's be real honest with ourselves. Over these past couple of years, since Joe Biden has been in office, this White House administration has openly stated repeatedly they're racist. That's the only description I can give it because they've openly stated they will help people based on ethnicity first. So if two people get shot in the chest, we can basically break it down to, well, if you're white, you better struggle it out. And if, if you're anything but white, you know, um, we're going to help you unless apparently you are heterosexual. Um, if you're a heterosexual person... And then it doesn't matter what color you are. You see what I'm saying? Because the way they put it, there's got to be some trans identifying multi-star gender bullshit person somewhere that apparently is, I don't know, more victimized than you or some shit. Again, this is this is what identity politics has done. And so I'm going off on the on a tangent here, but let's, let's get back to the basics. The thing that's happening with Ohio is that do we know that Norfolk Southern has not been maintaining the train tracks? Yes, anybody who's ever ridden on a train throughout the United States knows that they are poorly maintained. And the thing we have to actually go ahead and accept right now, and, you know, because people are going to get their, get, they're going to get heated. They're going to get hot. You know, they're going to be screaming in the street. Arr! Here's the reality. Nobody's going to jail. Nobody will go to jail for this. They'll say, it was a tragic accident that could not have been, we, we could not have anticipated such, I don't know, with train tracks that are falling apart. Yeah. You anticipated it, you knew you were just being cheap. And the federal government is, as far as I'm concerned, is just as guilty because it is their job to make sure that those companies are maintaining that shit. You know, we got all these regulations and all these fucking inspections. Oh my God, you're putting out too much smoke. But ho, 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 ho. Train tracks that have trains that carry toxic chemicals that can literally kill thousands to tens of thousands of people. The government's nowhere to be seen with their regulators. They want to regulate everything else. Oh my God, you want to brace for your handgun. Oh, we got to ban those. Why? Because it'll stop shootings. Bullshit. Bullshit. 
it, it, this is, and again, this is the government working on people's emotions. They're not working with facts. And they've come to realize that as long as you say some tragic emotional nonsense to people, uh, they'll get past it. They won't even bat an eye. But apparently we have the former president. He's going to um, East Palestine to, I guess, offer help to the people there. More help than they're getting than their government elected leaders. The sad part is the guy that is not in office is, you know, is getting more love. He's willing to do more than the guy that's in office and has the authority to actually do the work. And again, you know, you know, I, this is very um, disheartening. This is very disheartening. This is a tragedy. This is a clear sign that the current government doesn't give two shits about its citizens. Look, the area that's, that this is happening in is fucked up now. And we've talked about this. The air is fucked up. The land is fucked up. The water is messed up. You know, this is going to take years upon years upon years upon years to rectify this situation and I'm betting that like they do with everything they'll hope that in maybe a couple years you'll forget that this happened and then they'll continue to let that land be used the government will probably take it over and they'll use that land to grow and make food to serve to the plebes those in the lower end as I guess you could say because that's how they see it and then you'll have tragic situations people getting cancer and all kinds of stuff that are going to erupt from it, and they'll say, we don't know how this happened. And then when they trace it back to this whole situation, they'll say, we are very sorry for the tragedy that has befell these families. Allow us to offer you monetary compensation. Monetary compensation will not stop the bleeding out of their assholes. It's not going to stop them from dying. Ooh, wow. We'll give, we, we'll give you a quarter million dollars for your troubles. Eh, it looks like you got three years left to live, but eh, here, go ahead and spend this. What are you worried about? We're trying to lower the population anyway. But again, you know, the people that are there that are dealing with this, um, uh, you know, they can't really go back to their homes. They're not, it's not safe. It's not safe at all. It is not safe for anybody to be within, in my personal opinion, in my personal opinion, based off my own personal research and studies I've done over the years, which are connected but not quite connected to this, I guess you could say. But the point is, is that within the first five mile radius, everyone in that area, every citizen, okay, needs to be relocated. This is this is not a matter of just being overcautious. Hell, that's being under cautious. Every single one of those people within a five mile radius needs to be evacuated. Every one of their homes, every business, everything in that area needs to be de contaminated and Norfolk Southern needs to foot the bill. The federal government needs to also foot the fucking bill because neither one of them has done their jobs. Okay. Um, within a 10 mile radius. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and say that too. This is, let's be honest within a 20 mile fucking radius, a 20 mile radius. This is just to be safe here needs to be evacuated. It all needs to be evacuated. It all needs to be contaminated. The water is contaminated. Everything is contaminated, but the federal government, which is shoving shit down everybody's throat, has got nothing to say. They're not there. They're not doing anything about it. And look, these bleeding hearts that keep telling you, we got to save the world. We got to boot us. We need money for these people. We need money for those people. We need money for that group over there that has nothing to do with the United States. 
They can't be bothered to help their own people. Look, we're bringing people across the border illegally. We know they're coming across the border illegally. We know that they are putting a strain on the United States financially, educationally, medically, and every other way that you can think of. You've got the federal government giving SSI benefits to fucking Ukrainians. You're sticking foreign nationals on American basis to house them. You're commandeering hotels throughout the United States. You're taking taxpayer dollars, citizens' taxpayer dollars, to pay for the stay of these people who shouldn't be in the country anyway because they came here illegally. They didn't go through the port of entry. They didn't come here legally. Okay? You're housing them... But the people in this region where this train derailed, which you know is a toxic situation, you don't have the money. You can't find the money to house them. Okay? The sad part is right now in the United States, a person who comes into the country illegally, that person could be this person. And, this is, uh, and the sad part is, is that this is real. This is not speculation. This is the current state of things that we live in. A person coming across the United States southern border illegally, that we could track them and know that this person has killed five people south of the border, say five people in Honduras. We know that this person has been deported from the United States at least three, four, five times. We know that this person in the United States has either killed people, uh, sh assaulted people, okay? We know that this person could be not just a criminal in another country, but a country, but in the United States, be a criminal. We could have it on record. But as long as they say, I'm fleeing, I'm fleeing, I'm a refugee, please give me asylum. That person will get better treatment than the American citizen whose tax dollars the federal government is going to take their money to pay to house and treat and care for that person. And that's the sad state of what's happening in the United States. And then they turn around and tell you, oh, <laughs> we need tax money. We need tax money. Make sure to file and pay your taxes for what? Is any of it going to go to help those people that are in Ohio? Is it going to help any of the people in the surrounding areas? No, it's not. You're going to find some way to ship it south of the border to help protect some other country's border. You're going to find some way to ship it over to Asia to protect some country's borders. You're going to find some way to send it to Ukraine. Fuck Ukraine. That's the best I can put it. I, I, and people say, what about the Ukraine? Fuck them. Fuck all of them. I, I know that sounds tragic and harsh, but here's the fucking reality. They got all of Europe to talk to. They have all of fucking Europe. Tell me why are there Ukrainian refugees coming to the United States? All right. Let's just go ahead and jump into this first clip um and this is going to be from news nation i appreciate you listening to my rant there fema is now sending a team to east palestine ohio and this comes more than two weeks after the train derailment threatened the small town government mike governor rather mike dewine came under criticism for not requesting federal aid sooner and then his office criticized fema over allegations fema was two weeks. stepping up to help meantime there are new reports that former president trump will be visiting east palestine on wednesday trump is expected to meet with community members and now word that aaron brockovich will also be in east palestine for a town hall meeting. News Nation was the first network to speak with her after the disaster. The conditions are so bad that one woman who News Nation has been in contact with has rashes on her body after showering. Let's get to news. I gotta pause it right there. God damn. Shit so bad. <laughs> that a reporter who they made a movie about her life had to come out of the woodwork for this one. God damn. 
God damn. This, this administration should be ashamed of themselves. I'm sorry. If you voted for these people and you think they're doing a great job, obviously you don't have the capacity to keep your, I'm sorry, you, you probably should give up that right to vote because you obviously have no clue as to what is going on. <laughs> like, I mean, and, and, and look, I'm, 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 I'm going to give a little slack here. I'm going to go ahead and say maybe most of the people who voted for the people, this, this Democratic administration that's been in charge had no idea. Maybe they didn't watch enough of the news. Maybe everything was one-sided. Look, maybe you were under a rock, but at this point... If you can honestly, safely still say, well, yeah, I, I think they're doing a great job. No, you should not be allowed to vote because you have no clue as to what is going on. You and others like you will be the downfall of this great nation. I mean, you've already, your choices have already opened it up for takeover from other nations. We see it financially and based on the immigration process. Uh, yeah, you screwed everybody over. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get back into this. Rich McHugh live on the ground in East Palestine and East Palestine, excuse me. And when she spoke with a couple who's already having some negative health effects. Hey, good evening, Natasha. That's right. So the first news is that the CEO of Norfolk Southern was here today. Finally, after two weeks, showed up met with officials in this church behind me, closed, closed door meetings, was escorted in and out by police, but was overheard telling someone he is here in support. The people we're speaking to don't buy it. For instance, they say that the threat, the health threat is real here, real time. One woman, one couple we spoke to went back to their house. We interviewed them earlier in the week. They went back to their house today for 30 minutes and had some crazy health effects. Take a look. So we were in the kennel this morning, um, picking up some supplies. We left. I went home to take it to, well, home. I went back to the place where we're being evacuated. Caitlin Schwartzwelder and her boyfriend, Chris, after being evacuated, came back home today. But she says she broke out in a rash almost instantly. I undressed to get into the shower, and I had a rash all over the side of my face, on both sides, and all over my chest. Take a look at these photos of her this morning after coming back on her property. The rash all over her face, neck, and chest. My boyfriend, Chris, also had a rash down his left side, and, I mean, to, to this moment, right now, I have just a, a really low-grade, constant headache. They live nearly a mile from the derailment and where Norfolk Southern released the toxins into the air two weeks ago. But their issues clearly persist. But with FINA finally coming and with all the focus directed at East Palestine, these folks say they're forgotten because they live just over the state line in Pennsylvania. It feels like nobody gives a damn beyond us. They, too, were forced... I'm going to stop right there. You saw that smoke burning? You saw that fire burning? Well, according to the EPA, whew, bought and paid for agency. Jesus Christ. One mile. See, according to them, according to them and the science that they're using, all that stuff that they're burning off is only going to be in that one mile radius. Those people that are outside the one mile radius have, oh, you've got nothing to worry about. This is a control burn. We, we, we know exactly what we're doing. These people don't know shit. Greed and money, rather the greed of money, has put most federal agencies who have been tasked with keeping the environment safe for Americans has tainted them and this is this is the reality and you know and to give you an idea I'll, I'll just give you an idea if you start a small little wood fire and you're a block away you're gonna smell it a little teeny tiny fire if, if it's burning you're gonna smell it because air travels so imagine multiple train cars purposely set on fire with chemicals that are toxic and can kill people, are linked to cancers, as well as other situations. Imagine all those set on fire and then the Environmental Protection Agency tells you, eh, 
The water's fine. The water is fine. The, go ahead and take a nice steaming hot shower in this shit. And don't worry, it's only going to stay within a one mile radius. It's because, you know, our big brains have told us that the air will not go outside this one mile radius. Every last one of these people that has come out and said these lies, every last one of these people that has come out and said this nonsense needs to be held accountable. Pete Buttigieg, this little piece of shit, needs to be in jail. Look, remove him from his position because obviously he has no fucking clue what he's doing. You know, the guy who's telling you, don't worry about East Palestine. What we need to focus on is, is why are there so many white people in construction? Why are there so many white people in construction? You know, I went to this predominantly white area and I looked around and saw nothing but white people doing construction. Isn't that usually how it works? The people that live in an area tend to typically work in the area. Call me crazy, but if you went to uh, Chicago or Baltimore, where it's predominantly black. I bet if you went into any of those places, you will find predominantly black people working. That's how it fucking works. But apparently, um, your transportation secretary doesn't know what that is. He doesn't know how that works. And I think this guy wanted a higher position. Holy shit. Holy shit. Whoo! Could you imagine him being your president? <laughs> oh, apparently it looks like he got the job because he's married to a man and I'm not saying that matters I don't care but let's be honest that's why he got the job identity politics we have a currently a government that's based on identity politics and as they have expressed and displayed over these past couple of years the help you receive will literally be based off your skin color and who you decide to go to bed with. And apparently also which parts of your body decide to chop off to pretend to be something else if that's what you want to do. You know, like if you want to, I don't know, um, have a fin. If you could have a fin attached to your back, you could pretend to be a shark. And, you know, they would give you some extra, extra help because you're a fish out of water. Thank you. <laughs> that's a reality. And there will be more to come, but I thank you for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.